Welcome back. Let's take just five minutes to quickly make this website a little bit prettier. Just to show you how easy it is to customize a website once you have the layout done. A recommended step that I've mentioned multiple times. When you build a website, figure out your layout, make it responsive, and once that's done, the rest is kind of fun. You just add nice CSS properties, some images to just prettify it. So in our case, I want to show you a website called, well, noshit.xyz. And it's going to really help you out because, well, it gives you free design resources to use. And they have fonts, illustrations, mockups, UI kits, everything for free that you can use on your website. In our case, we can use something like OnDraw over here that gives us a ton of MIT illustrated or licensed illustrations. So if I go to browse now, we see that we have a ton of images that we can use. So in my case, I've downloaded one of these images and we're gonna use it as our cover photo. So let's go back to our project and in my cover photo over here, instead of just having cover with exclamation marks, I'll just have an image tag that will have a class of cover, a CSS property that we're gonna, or CSS class that we'll use. And it's going to link to the image that I just downloaded in my images folder. Again, this should already be in your starter files that I gave to you. So if you look in that folder, you'll see that we have an image folder. And from there, we're gonna grab the onDraw.jpg. If I save this and refresh, oh, and make sure I finish that huff with an ending bracket, and I refresh, oh, and this is a PNG. Let's refresh. That's a lot better, but oh boy, that's a big image. We can easily fix this by going to our style, going to our cover, and using the cover class that we've added to the image to just say that we want the width to be well, we can say 100% that, but that might be too big. I don't like it that big. Let's do 30 EM. If I refresh, or REM, if I refresh, that's better. But we want to get rid of this red background now. Let's have everything in white. Just going to go up to our zone. And we can just actually remove the red from here. If I refresh, much better. That looks a lot better. All right. So as we see, the image size isn't growing, which is good, but it looks nice and pretty as the cover photo. Another thing that I noticed is that when I scroll down, I want the header tab to be sticky, that is to scroll with me. And that's another common pattern that we'll see that's fairly easy to do. We can just give the nav element a sticky class. And this sticky class can say that it'll have position of fixed and a top of zero, that is start of top. And if I refresh this, it will actually, because of the position fixed, although it works now, it messed up our width, so we want to make sure that the width is always 100%. So all we would do is at the end say width 100%. Again, these three properties together is a common pattern that you'll see to make, to make navigation sticky. So that now when I scroll down, look at that, our navigation is nice and sticky. Let's make the green navigation bar blue. So I'll turn this into blue. All right, that looks a lot better. What else? We can change our font, let's say, to something prettier. Font family. Let's just say Arial. If I refresh, all right, that looks a little bit cleaner. What else can we do here? Well, just to finish it off, maybe we want to do something different when we hover over the zone. Let's say that with the 
boxes when we hover over them. I can just copy and paste this. Let's make them tilt a little bit. So I'll say box. And instead of shadow or box shadow, we'll say transform. And we'll just say that we want to rotate, say, negative 7 degrees. If I save and refresh, look at that. We have some grid systems that when we hover over them, they rotate 7 degrees. I mean, I wanted to demonstrate to you how fast we can convert a website to start looking good. By no means is this perfect, but by just changing a few properties, we've now gone from this to our final view. And you can imagine how within a day of improving this website, making this a little bit prettier, maybe you really like this website's cards that they have here. So you can just inspect the element and perhaps just copy their CSS styles. But there's a lot of flexibility here. The important point though is the fact that you start with your layout using Flexbox and CSS Grid. And then it's really up to you and your creativity to design beautiful websites. I hope that was fun. I definitely had a lot of fun playing with CSS Grid and Flexbox, and I'll see you in the next video.